there any side of this package that I can show? Thought maybe it would say plant lights on it. It does not. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Just got a plant in the mail, which is a huge relief because I didn't have a video planned for today, and it is the night before this video comes out. So we have a plant to talk about. Just finished up a pretty long day of yard work. Got some things repotted and up potted and a lot of impatience planted and myself a little cocktail here i mean iced tea it's iced tea from long island and i thought y'all would want to see this plant oh and it's late it's getting dark not quite it's that time of year so it's not gonna be dark and well, at least fully dark until maybe 9 30 ish but the picture might be a little grainy sorry i don't know what to tell you it's when the plant got here we're just going with the flow here gotta unpack the plants when they come in the mail it's just one. It's just this one little plant that it's thirsty. I need to give it some water. Come over here. I'll set this down right here inside this pot. It's needed, it needs to be someplace stable. Hold still. Hold still so I can get some water. Tacarum caudatum. <laughs> this is the worst plant video I've ever done. Caudatum eruption is the name given to this plant by Plant Delights. The reason I thought y'all might want to see it is because it's maybe potentially a more cold hardy crazy tropical looking plant for some of y'all who live further south than i do i'm in 6b 7 8 somewhere in there at plant delights this plant has been returning for them in zone 7b basically no problem similar to an amorphophallus or just any other type of what we'd call a voodoo lily or corpse flower those are different plants just rambling off other plants that this one is related to it's a very big arum aeroid aeroid it's a very big arum aeroid you, you know what you get it right now i know just seeing the one little leaf not much to it but what's cool about this one is it will have multiple leaves per bulb which isn't something you get with some of the amorphophallus right so this one stands out from that in that respect stands out from the amorphophallus in that respect the uh, growth on these will be multiples of these long leaves this entire thing that's technically one leaf i believe up to like five or six feet tall i'll have plant delights their website up there so, so you can fact check all that i did not memorize that the plant showed up and i said oh let's talk about it and did i didn't i didn't do any research it's just a fun looking plant that's mainly the whole point here a fun looking very exotic and tropical looking plant that will have many 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 of these large leaves much larger than this this one's still a baby oh there's a tag in here i bet there's information on the tag remember i place these orders in like december or january so by the time some of the plants come i'm just like um what are you and how big will you get i don't does it say what's what's going on here i don't know what that's supposed to mean height of zero four eight huh a decent sized plant that dies down to the ground every single year really cool growth on it the flowers on them it's not going to be one of those big just funnel feminine looking flowers that you see with an amorphophallus with these it's very large spats that have lots of little white flowers in them one of the reasons that i think this is such an interesting plant is well, one just because you don't get that kind of growth on a lot of plants that have this hardiness to them brian's botanicals website talks about the tacarum caudatum and on there under additional details on their website they say that it comes back in 6b with mulch but not necessarily reliably it needs more work or time they need to look into it some more so i am going to be putting this in the ground in a very sheltered spot where it's going to get filtered light throughout the day and uh, some morning sun that's the only direct sun it will be getting and remembering that it needs to be mulched very heavily during the winter time the sooner you get them planted up the better and it's that time of year it's, what early june right now so this still has many months to go ahead and get itself established and uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. There aren't a lot of hardy aeroids that have that massive size for Zone 6. And even the cooler parts of Zone 7. There's not a ton to choose from. This is a thirsty plant, and I should not be wiggling and wobbling a thirsty plant all over the place. Let's have a look at this leaf. Even though it is thirsty, you get the idea of what you're dealing with here, right? Very, very heavily lobed. It does look a lot kind of, well, I don't know about a lot. But it does give me the vibes of a, I want to say philodendron, but it's not a philodendron, it's the uh, bipinidifidum, the matophyllum bipinidifidum, kind of, sort of, that might be a stretch, but if you look hard enough, you can kind of see it, right? And this was, I would say, a bit of a risky buy, because I planted a whole bunch of different aeroids last year of the voodoo lilies and some of the more 
party type corpse flowers, Amorphophallus, last year. None of them survived the winter, but it was a different kind of winter. It was actually an extremely mild winter, but it went from like 50 something degrees in January to minus 12 in a matter of days and stayed below zero degrees Fahrenheit for about two weeks. And then it came back up and the rest of the winter was pretty mild. If it weren't for that two weeks, I probably would have been able to leave a lot of my plants outside. And I'm sure that those other aeroids I had planted would have survived the winter. I didn't mulch them very heavily because I just didn't think something like that was going to happen. So lesson learned with this one, I'm going to be giving it lots and lots and lots of mulch. Similar to what I would do with my bananas. These will die back naturally on their own. The day lengths shorten, things start to dry out and they'll start to shrivel up. I like to let them shrivel up, let those nutrients go back into the root of the plant, into the bulb. Cut off the stuff once it's all limp and dried up pile the mulch on top and keep your fingers crossed and hope for the best. Alternatively, if you're not feeling as risky, you can just dig and store the bulbs like you do just about any other bulb or tuber. Someplace cool, dark, and dry. Get as much mud and stuff off of it as possible before you take it in. Maybe dry it out some. That would be a good idea before storing it because that would just help avoid rot with the plant. And then moving back out, I would say late winter into a container and gently let them wake up. They're not that hard to overwinter. If you are looking for a voodoo type lily or corpse flower that's more hardy and you want that really big, just dramatic flower on them, then the Amorphophallus konjac, great option. This is not something I'm growing for the flower. The flower is cool, and I think that that's why they gave it its name, Eruption, because of the way the spaz just sort of ex look like they're exploding out from the plant and they're so floriferous and kind of eye-catching. That is neat, and it's an awesome feature of the plant, but for me, just seeing the big massive clumps of these giant leaves i think that's going to be so cool i cannot wait to get this one planted and watch it grow the best location that i have for this in the garden is going to be up here under the mimosa and the pine trees which isn't the warmest spot in the garden so a bit risky all of my uh, nice microclimate areas in the garden get a ton of sun way too much sun for one of these an alternative that i thought of a better location might be down here pardon the mess it's all going to be taken care of in the vlog hopefully that comes out on saturday potentially over here in between these two needle palms it's a fairly warm location when it does get really cold these needle palms have big covers on them with lights to help keep them warm when it drops below zero now well, that might work that might be a good spot for it it also might be a spot where it would end up getting choked out so maybe it's a bad idea to put it there it's something to think about i have a day or two before the extreme heat gets here I'd like to probably get it in the ground tomorrow, so I will get that all figured out tonight and get this planted up in the vlog that comes out after this one. So if you're curious as to where I put it, it will hopefully be in that video if I remember tomorrow that I said that I was going to do that. Who knows? I have no idea. It's getting late and this is a last minute video. It, by the way, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing the name of this plant correctly. It's one of those things where I read about it plenty, but never heard anybody else say it. So, Tacarum, Tacarum, I don't know. Well, yeah, seven being up should be good 6b and 7a i don't know we're going to find out comment down below what are some of your favorite like, hardy type aeroids or just some plants that you're having some fun experimenting with this year if you're in 7b i'd really recommend giving one of these a try because the pictures of them just look absolutely breathtaking when they're nice and full and full grown really something that stands out in the garden and yeah like i said comment down below i love talking to everybody hope everybody's doing well having a great day great night everything's just going absolutely beautiful for you who said that fast all right of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. I'm trying to get a glamour shot of it, but it's so sad and wealthy. It'll look better in the morning. Bye-bye.